chapter 2, the suffering years. For the next many years, I lived in a place that was jam-packed with dogs, mostly smaller dogs like me, and there were lots and lots of them. We never went outside, so we relieved ourselves whenever and wherever we had to. As soon as they, as I had puppies every year, sometimes twice a year. Hmm. As soon as they could eat a little puppy food, I was taken away from them. Then they would be gone, and I would be made ready to have some more. As the years went by, more and more dogs came to this house. We were almost living on top of each other. Some of us began to get sick. Fleas were everywhere. They were all over our skin, in our ears, everywhere. Hmm. We scratched so much, we had sores. We got sores from mats under our skin, especially long-haired dogs like me. The mats would get so bad, the skin underneath would become infected and raw. Once a week, we would get hosed down to rinse off all the filth and waste. We would shake and shiver for a long time, especially in the wintertime when it was cold. There was never enough to eat, and what we did get did not taste very good, and it wasn't very healthy. I kept having puppies until my body did not work as well as it once did. In fact, I started losing my teeth when I was still young. Pretty soon, all of them were gone, and I had to use my gums and my lower jaw to get the food out of the dish or off the floor. As time went by, the bone in my jaw just melted away. When that happened, I could not keep my tongue in my mouth, and it was difficult to eat the food that was hard, but I did the best I could. After a few more years, I started having trouble making babies. So I was taken out of my birth and cage home where I raised my babies and left to roam in the house with dozens of other dogs. We were always sick. We got eye infections all the time that hurt really bad. And we were always rubbing our eyes on the dirty floor or each other. <coughs> Some of my housemates could not see anymore. So they were always running into the wall or falling down the stairs. Us women began to get larger and larger breasts from feeding so many puppies that even though we did not have puppies anymore, we still had all kinds of lumps and bumps there. I still have them to this day. About that time, I got a Cracker Jack on one of my eyes. It got so bad, I could not see out of it anymore. But at least I could see out of the other one. Not very well, but enough to get out of the way of the other dogs milling around. I was deaf in one ear, so it was hard for me to figure out where noises were coming from. And then almost all, all of us got really sick with worms that got in our hearts. We had no idea what was wrong with us, only that we could not breathe good or catch our breath. Some of us even died. These worms are just awful since they grow and grow and have little worms in the heart until the heart does not beat at all. These were the hard years. I never got petted or talked too sweet. Every day and night were the same. The stench of infection, the taste of stale molded food, the sound of misery and constant itch from fleas. There was no kindness in this hoarding house. I lived there for a very long time, and to help me pass the suffering times, I turned to singing every night. Uh -huh. Singing made me feel safe and happy, like I was special. Nobody paid attention to my singing because they were crying or barking or squealing or whining or having babies. Then one day, some people found out about the hoarding house. They picked us up and took us to a shelter named the Animal Rescue Fund of Mississippi. Even though I was really scared, I sang my way through the fear of new things and took a turn for the better. 